I want to bring in now CBS News contributor and former chief of operations in the CIA's counterterrorism mission center, Andrew Boyd. Andrew, these drones are on their way to Israel. So what do you anticipate this escalation will mean? Uh, so good evening. Uh, and, and we, again, as, as our colleagues have been saying, uh, we're trying to avoid escalation. But because there's a lot of uh, unknowns and uncertainty as to where these 100, uh, potentially 100 plus drones are heading, um, we can assume that there, there will be escalation. Again, this could be the lead element of a wider attack. We're focusing on these 100 drones. Um, but in fact, this could be a lead element of a broader attack, including rockets and missiles of, uh, into northern Israel from Lebanon, from other proxies, Shia proxies inside Iraq. Um, one thing is for certain that the Israelis are prepared for this. Uh, Central U.S. Central Command, and, and has, been, has been noted, General Carilla, the commander of Central Command, is in the area. Uh, so, so the Israelis are prepared for this. Uh, the U.S. forces in the region are prepared for this. Uh, but there's a lot of unknowns. For, uh, as far as escalation goes, um, we'll have to see over the next uh, 12 to 24 hours what, what this all means. But there is a significant potential for an escalation into a broader uh, regional conflict, which, again, uh, President Biden and his entire administration want to avoid. And on that front, uh, we heard from our colleagues that the Jordanians may potentially try to shoot down some of these incoming drones. Egypt has traditionally played a role in trying to de-escalate conflict in the region. How do you expect some other countries to respond to this? So, so shooting out the, the drones, I mean, many of these drones are slow moving, they're subsonic, um, so, so the Jordanians could shoot them down. Again, we've seen uh, in, in the context of Ukraine, Ukrainians are, are successful in shooting down a number of these Iranian manufactured uh, or Iranian model drones used by the Russians. That being said, it's, it's a mass attack, 100, and again, we keep hearing the term 100, but there's, there could be more. And, there could, and, and they could overwhelm, very easily overwhelm, the air defenses of Israel and Israel's uh, neighbors, such as Jordan. I mean, the Jordanians have a very strong military, uh, but their, their, their counter-missile capabilities are limited. Um, and, and the Jordanians don't want to use all of their counter-drone, uh, counter-missile capabilities uh, on just this one attack, or else they'll, they'll be out of anti-aircraft capability. Uh, and Andrew, um, I want to pick up on something that you that you said that these are slow moving subsonic drones. We also heard from MTS that Iranian state media is re is reporting that in addition to the drones that there are also missiles uh, that were sent. But in in the case of the drones, at least, given that they are slow moving, given that it will take hours and that they are potentially more easily taken out before causing any casualties. Do you see that as an indication that Iran needed to, to take retaliatory action, but is in fact trying to de-escalate this conflict to the best of their ability? So, so that is in pattern with how the Iranians, after, the, uh, after Qasem Soleimani was killed, they did signal quite a bit uh, to the United States that an attack was coming. Now, granted, it, wasn't, it was not a drone attack against U.S. bases in Iraq. It was a ballistic missile attack, which—, which it is supersonic and travel, obviously travels at quite quite a fast rate. If if the Iranian uh, attack against Israel is limited to a hundred slow moving sub subsonic drones with fairly limited explosive capability, uh, and, and it ends at that, uh, per perhaps that is the Iranian signal. Yes, let's not escalate beyond, beyond this, and that's all we're intending to do. The problem with that is. If those 100 drones land in, in Tel Aviv in, in a populated area and kill civilians, hit a hospital, uh, it, you know, hit a concentration of Israeli civilians, I, I mean, I, I don't think the Netanyahu government will have any uh, alternative other than to further retaliate against the Iranians. And the prime minister has said as much. Um, let's talk a little bit, though, about timing, Andrew. I was speaking with MTS about religious calendars. Um, but this also comes in the context of Israel uh, intending to have a ground invasion in Rafah, uh, being dissuaded by the United States and other international actors trying to, uh, to minimize casualties in Gaza. Do you think that in any way that this is Iran trying to redivert attention uh, away from uh, from that potential military action by Israel? Uh, 
No, I, I really don't. I mean, I think this is solely tied uh, to the attack in Damascus uh, against the facility uh, adjacent to the uh, Iranian embassy uh, in Damascus and the fact that uh, the, the a very senior IRGC Quds Force officer was killed along with several other officers. I, I, this is directly tied to the tied to that uh, and, 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 a need, and a need in the minds of the of the Iranian government. Uh, that they needed to retaliate against, against that, that uh, alleged uh, Israeli attack. Uh, the Iranians have really tried to, to stay out of uh, the conflict between Israel and Hamas, and any linkage be between the, the two, I think, would, would be a supposition that just wouldn't, wouldn't fit with Iranian behavior. Hmm. Interesting. Uh, and you didn't say a alleged attack by Israel on that embassy in Damascus. Um, Israel has not claimed responsibility for it. Obviously, Iran wholly uh, has, is holding Israel responsible. Does it matter at any, uh, in any way that Israel has not claimed responsibility um, or... So, well, so, so help history, our viewers understand that aspect. So, of so, it. so yes, you, you make a very good point. Uh, but in the history of Israel's conflict with Syria, and then with with Iranians uh, and the Iranian proxies in Syria, uh, th there there has there has always been uh, a denial, or the Israelis just have never uh, acknowledged it. So my my point on on the alleged attack, yes, is is my is that the Israelis have never acknowledged that they did attack. That facility. Now there is a number. There's no one else who could claim responsibility. But um, the, the bigger debate about that facility is what it was, and 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 the Iranians are claiming it was a consulate. Uh, I, I lived in Damascus uh, as a diplomat. Um, actually, I lived on, in that neighborhood, um, and and I, I the Iranians have used that facility and and the embassy for for their activities su supporting Hezbollah, supporting other. Uh, Shia militia groups around the region. Uh, so to, to reference it as a consulate, a consulate that issues visas as a consulate, the United States consulates worldwide would, it is a bit of a stretch. So I, that, that argument is a bit spurious on the Iranians' part. But you know, the fact of the matter remains that the Israelis have not acknowledged that that was their attack against that facility that I say in quotes, the Iranians uh, claim as a consulate. Andrew, appreciate that, that insight. I want to ask you about one other thing, because critics of the Biden administration would point to their decision to release uh, those funds in, uh, in terms of a humanitarian, um, a humanitarian release of the funds back to Iran. In fact, we heard that from the former president, Donald Trump, in his criticism of the Biden administration just uh, yesterday evening. Is that, in fact, a, a factor in this in any way? I, I really don't think so. I mean, it, you know, uh, diplomatic negotiations are what they are. Uh, uh, foreign states, adversary states like the Iranians put, put terms on those negotiations. Uh, the Biden administration saw that that was an, uh, an important negotiating uh, tactic to, to offer those funds. The Iranians have plenty of other funds to, to fund their, their nefarious activities throughout the region, the funding uh, of Hezbollah and, and other, uh, other groups like that. One specific check, so to speak, is not going to make a demonstrable difference to Iranian intent uh, in the region. And if you'll bear with us for just a second, it looks like we have a statement from the Iranian embassy in London. It's a formal statement. Uh, it says, in retaliation for the heinous actions committed by the Zionist regime, which included an assault on the consular section of the Iranian embassy in Damascus and the loss of Iran's military leaders and advisors, the aerospace force of the Islamic Revolutionary Guard Corps launched a punitive strike against the occupied territories. This operation involved the use of both missiles and drones, aiming to hold the illegitimate and criminal regime accountable. Uh, the language that they use is in some ways to be expected from Iran, but what do you make of that statement, Andrew? So so back to our, our, our earlier uh, uh, discussion, uh, I mean, I think they're trying to get ahead of this with a public relations message, so to speak, that implies that this is a bounded attack, that they are trying to, they're not trying to de-escalate, obviously, but they're trying to to keep this to go, not go beyond where they currently are in this conflict. Um, if in fact um, they are successful in in, in, in bounding their, their retaliation, um, I think that'll be a good thing for the entire region and and for for the United States of America as well, and definitely a good thing for the, for Israel. But they're really playing with fire in my mind, uh, the the Iranian government, because where those drones land and where they detonate 
and where the miss and if in fact there are ballistic missiles because because honestly the the the, the lag time between a ballistic missile launch and impact, I mean, I think we'd already be there if, in fact, they had lost ballistic, uh, launched ballistic missiles. Mm -hmm. So, so I'm, I'm, I'm skeptical even on that. But let's just, for argument's sake, say there are ballistic missiles inbound to, to Israel and 100 drones. It, the question is where they're going to impact. And, 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 and if they kill Israeli civilians um, and if they land in downtown Tel Aviv, if they hit important uh, uh, locations in Jerusalem, uh, I, I really think the Iranians may have may have overplayed their hand. All right, but Andrew. Only, we'll, time, only time will tell on that. And we will be watching uh, over the next few hours in particular. Andrew Boyd, the former chief of operations in the CIA's counterterrorism mission center. Appreciate all of your insight. For now, we're going to take a quick break. We'll be back in just a few minutes with the very latest.